and gentlemen, what we have here are max peening rods, lower control arms, AKA camber arms for my E46. Here goes nothing. Today we have another review slash install for you. Right here I have Max Peening Rod's rear camber arms for my E46 drift car. Huge shout out to Max Penis Peen Peening Peening Penis Peening. Huge shout out to Max Peening Rods for sending out a set of camber arms. Actually we got two uh, spare set for another one of my E46s. The bushing's not the cleanest thing in the world by no means. For the money pretty pretty darn good. So these are engineered to actually bend. I mean just like every other control arm ever made. If you get an accident, they are made to bend, I'm guessing probably here in this joint skinny part that's threaded on the inside. Other than that, it's got a nice little adjustability, which that's kind of the whole idea behind it. I've been having a problem with this car that the tires will actually wear further on the inside because I'm running too much camber uh, because I'm a BC racing coilovers. So these little guys should actually fix that problem. Um, this is a drift car, so I do go through a lot of tires and with bad alignment, um, I can actually burn through more tires than I should. Like this tire burned more on the inside than it did the outside. If you have an E46, go check out Max Peating Rods. They sent me out a couple sets for freezies, so make sure to go give them some love. Um, they got a lot of parts for everything known to man, so um, they sent me out a flag too, so maybe we'll have to put it up in the shop somewhere or the bathroom or the closet. Without further ado, let's get the car up in the air, get the install going. So with the car up on the lift, you can actually see kind of what I'm talking about as far as tire wear goes. You can see the inside of the tire is a lot more worn than the outside. Well, you gotta fix that. The stock arms don't have enough adjustability. So that's why we're actually switching to the aftermarket ones to give more adjustability. These are the stocky boys right here. They work, but they don't have enough adjustability. Um, I haven't actually even tried to adjust them. We're just gonna go and replace them. Pretty straightforward. I'm actually gonna try to leave the tire on bolt nut here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the ratchet with that. Well, there's the one bolt in the subframe. I was wondering how we could hold the nut on the back Come to find out, it's actually a flag nut, which I'll show you what it is when I get it off. Old one's out, new one's in my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and set the link to be about the same as stock. So that's kind of where I'm gonna start from. And then we can adjust it once the new one's in. So a little tip before we put the new one in, I'm gonna go ahead and line up the old one and the new one. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the adjustment. So each end will actually twist. A little rule of thumb I like to do is make sure the same amount of threads are showing on each side, the little black threads. As you can see, they're about even. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe adjust it a little bit more. Pretty much what that does whenever you're adjusting the camera on the car, it'll leave the same amount of threads out on each side. So that way, this end doesn't have four inches of thread showing and this end has none. They're even, I don't know, something I like to practice. This is that flag nut I was talking about earlier. How it works, it's a it's just a basic nut. However, it has this little, uh, little leg to it. Whenever you're turning the bolt, this will actually catch on something and hold it in place so you don't have to use a wrench. That's why it's all rounded, except for the wing. So it turns up there until it catches a piece of metal and then it holds it in place. Super cool. One side's in, I'm gonna start the other side, but I do wanna show you guys really quick. So I have it in, I have the jam nuts loose on both sides. And I can actually take, just take my hand since the car's in the air. That's reducing camber and that's adding camber just by me twisting my hand. Now on the driver's side, this bolt's easy. However, this bolt is getting blocked by the exhaust. I do have a muffler delete on this car. Might make it a little bit easier for me. She's right up here in that little hole. So I might have to get a kind of fancy little extension or something, get in there. Other than that's the same process as that side. One little tip I want to show you guys is if you ever have a nut or bolt that won't come loose, and you don't have an impact, you can actually just go ahead and put your wrench and ratchet, hold it with one hand, and then take yourself a dead blow hammer. Hit the edge of the ratchet or the wrench, and it kind of acts as an impact, kind of jolts it loose. So much better than busting your knuckles. 10 out of 10, would recommend. So what I'm having to do to get this bolt out on the driver's side, I went ahead and undid the big 21 millimeter diff bolt, the main big boy, and then I barely loosened the back too. I'm gonna jack the diff up just enough to be able to pull this camber on bolt out. It's almost out. Just can't clear the diff. I'll show you in a second. All right, that side was a pain. Finally got the bolt out. This side took me five minutes. I've been working on this side for half an hour. I'm not even done. So I got my little trans jack out. Take this bolt out and then go ahead and loosen these two underneath. When I mean loosen, I mean almost have them all the way out. Um, and then jack the diff up as high as you can. 
until it hits the underside of the chassis and even then you barely have enough room in there to squeeze this little guy out. A little bit of prying, a little bit of finessing. She's out, new camber arm going in. And just like that, we have her all wrapped up. Got everything installed. This side was a little bit more of a pain than that side, so keep a heads up on that. One thing you'll definitely wanna do with your E46 after you do this is go get an alignment. We can eyeball it as best we can, however, so nothing is gonna beat a uh, alignment rack and machine. So I'm probably gonna do that or I might just eyeball it since it is a drift car and I have an event coming up here in a few days. Overall, this is gonna solve my issues with camber, like I was saying. Shout out to Max Speeding Rods for sending them out. I'll leave a link down in the description of where I got these arms. If you haven't already guys, make sure to like and subscribe. We have a lot of E46 stuff coming to the channel. You will not wanna miss it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Hey.